Joining me now is Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. President Zelensky, welcome to Meet the Press. Дуже раді вас бачити. Дякую за цю можливість поговорити з вами. President Zelensky, let me start off by asking you. It has now been more than 600 days since Russia invaded Ukraine. How would you describe the state of the war right now? Дуже дякую за запитання. Що, а що стосується сьогоднішньої ситуації на полі бою, ну, я думаю, що безумовно всіх деталей я не можу вам сказати, але тим не менш, сьогодні є а, ініціатива в наших руках. Так, два роки, я думаю, що ви можете для себе уявити, що таке повномасштабної війни майже два роки. І втомлюються всі. Навіть техніка, ви знаєте, що залізо не витримує, але тим не менш, я пишаюся нашими воїнами, що вони міцні. Також нашим народом, який постійно допомагає, який мобілізован по своєму змісту і якого дійсно ну, потужне бажання перемогти. В деяких напрямках, Крістін, ми бачимо кроки вперед. Іноді вони уповільнені через щільність мін, які... Росія зробила а, у час, а, коли ми готувалися до контрнаступальних дій, а в деяких напрямках а, у нас є складнощі з небом. Ці складнощі, вони, на жаль, вони не змінились. З самого початку повномасштабного вторгнення ми бачили домінування Росії в небі. І це факт. І сьогодні без ППО наші кроки вперед уповільнені. Але я хочу відмітити, що наші кроки вперед. That is so important to understand people. That initiative in our hands. Yes, it's really complicated period. It's understandable that there are different voices in Europe, in the United States. But you have to know that we are going forward, step by step. If we can have air defense, and I, my address, I address it, to all partners, to all partners in the world, world, I'm thankful for their help, but they have to know, and you have to know that Russia controls the sky all these years by the drones, by the jets, by the air defense. You know that we have big deficit with air defense, but I can give you one example about Black Sea. We have great success in the Black Sea. Even after Russia blocked the Black Sea and canceled our grain corridor, grain initiative, by, by the way, we held by this corridor to countries of Asia, countries of Africa, to manage the hunger. And I think that is, was very important, crucial. And when Russia canceled it because they had the initiative in the Black Sea, they blocked Black Sea now. We really defeated it. We really defend our Black Sea and Russian fleet been destroyed by our ammunition. And now Russia doesn't control fleet. That means that we used all ammunition, sea drones and air defense to defend this region. It's very important. That was a signal, signal that we can manage this war even against such terrorist organization like Kremlin. And we did it. And now our grain corridor, the new one, the new route, parallel route, is works, works well. Yes, with the challenges, with the rockets, Russia attacks this corridor, this humanitarian mission. But anyway, we manage it and it worked. The same on the front line. Christian, I'm sorry that I'm with so many, I'm using so many details, but I want you just to understand what really goes on. On the front line, that is not the secret, and I want to share with you, we don't have air defense. That's why Russia controls the sky. When we will get air defense from our partners, what will be our ammunition? Troops will go, not will go, will run forward it will be more quicker because we we can't spend our people it's not bodies you know it's real people it's humanity we can't spend it like like russia doing like you know their attitude to their soldiers like to the meat i'm so sorry but we can't do it that's why we have to move but if they control all the sky t 
until those moments when we will get air defense, if they control, we can't move quickly forward. And what, one, the last point, what I want to tell you about the air defense, I'm sorry, just to close this moment. I'm very thankful to President Biden, to our European partners, to Chancellor Schwartz, and some other, our Nordic partners. They gave us, gave us air defense. And when they gave us, and we, one year ago, we could manage air defense in some cities in our country, now we see the growing economy. This year, 5% growing economy. IMF, World Bank, everybody recognized it. It means that people could come back to Ukraine with their children. They come back from Germany, from Poland, Slovak Republic, because they, they needed too much to come back and have some secure, you know, to have some air defense. So the key is air defense. President Zelensky, to follow up with you on that point, is that your ask? of the United States and other allies, more air defenses? What is your top ask right now? Yes, very much. And that is the main, my, my main message, to give me possibility to compare our power with Russia in the sky. That is about F-16, but we should to wait. We have to wait F-16, you know, long period of time because of training mission, because of jets and etc. But air defense, more quick stage, more quick step forward to the victory. And of course, I communicated with President Biden and we decided to our teams to work on the very important issue, not to give us air defense because that is a deficit in the world. Yes, but to produce together. It will be important also for companies, for American companies, and it will be important for us because it's jobs and it's not... And it, because you know that air defense is very expensive, but we don't need presence. We need to save our country. That's why one of the way is to co-produce air defense. But during this time, during our co-production, our message to the world, to United States, to Europe, to Asia, to give us some air defense systems just to use them, just to rent them. Red for this period, especially winter. Winter, very challenging period. All right, and President Zelensky, I'm going to delve more deeply into what you specifically need, but let's well, pick up care. on where you just left ah. off. The strategy of this war. This summer, and you reiterated right now, the progress has been slower than desired. And recently, one of your top generals said Ukraine has, quote, reached a stalemate. Has the war reached a stalemate? Christian, you know, on the 24th of February, when Russia invaded our cities, country, our land, our families, and they attacked all of us, the world gave us three days. Some European countries who really believed in us, they said one month. Others said... It will be very quick. And this is really this situation, what they said. But now we speak with you. Now it's almost two years. Now initiative in our hands. Yes, a lot of people, of course, in the world are tired. Of course, it's understandable. Somebody tired on the battlefield, somebody tired uh, on their works and somebody tired abroad, they want to come back home to their husbands, to their soldiers, to these guys, w women and, and children, somebody tired from European leaders to support Ukraine. Yes, of course, because long war. But you have to know, I'm sure that we are just in this case where some ammunition, some strong ammunition can help us to manage the same way like it was last year, when everybody said that we think that we are in the difficulty situation and Ukraine will not have any success on the battlefield, a lot of people told it one year ago. It was complicated period, but anyway, we defended. We found our power and we defended 
two regions, Kharkiv region and Kherson region. Not everything, but we did it against Russia, against their army, because we are still more motivated than any Russians, any Russians devils who came to Ukraine to kill us. But my question is, of course, not to lose unity and to believe in ourselves. Of course, that is important. But my question is, what is the alternative? What do we have to do to say, okay, we are, we are not, okay, yes, our partners or some of, some of our partners are really think that we can't go forward, that we can't have success, that we will not win. What, what, what to do? What alternative? To give Putin, to give Putin this possibility to kill all of us, to destroy our nation, all, all what we, what we have, and what to do so dozens of millions of people will run away to Europe, United States. What to do? What is the alternative? There is no alternative. Because it's not the question of Ukraine. Not only of Ukraine. That is the question of security in Europe. That is the question of the unity in NATO. Because Russia after Ukraine, after Ukraine, Russia will attack NATO countries. What will all the world do? What they will do? What is the alternative? One alternative, what I heard and I hear, to give Putin what he wants and to stop the war. What does it mean? You, to give 30% of our land? What to do with those people who are on temporary occupied territories? What to do with those thousands of people who have been killed by Putin and by his army? Just to forget about it. No accountability, no tribunal, no what to do. I know what to do. We have to be strong. I hope that still Europe and the United States believe in our power, believe in our humanity, our attitude to the people, our attitude to democracy. And you have to know if we feel if we will fall down. Sorry for my English, Christian. If I make a lot of mistakes, I'm so sorry. But if we Fallen down. You have to know. Now look at Middle East. But you have to know such Ukraine, such Middle East will be more and more. We will give pass to autocrats. We will give chance to tyranny. We will give them this wish, wish to destroy democracy in the world. That is the way. That's why I don't see for today, for today, I don't see any alternatives. I really believe in unity in the world, in the support of the world of Ukraine and democracy. And I really believe and trust our people and our soldiers. President Zelensky, your English is very clear, in fact, and we appreciate very much your speaking in English. So thank you. Let me follow up with you. I thank hear you. So you much. I hear you rejecting the characterization by your top general that this is a stalemate. Are you changing strategies, as has been reported? I believe that today is really, really a difficult situation. I don't believe that this is a pathetic situation. This is a kind of shock from the army of Russia, but up to this point, ми зробили так само. Ми були в такій складній ситуації. Вони вважали, що вони нам поставлять мат, але все це не відбулось. Навпаки, ми забрали ініціативу в свої руки. Зараз Росія, зараз Росія хоче зробити цей шах. Зараз Росія атакує нас на сході нашої держави, втрачаючи тисячі людей і сотні одиниць техніки. Ми ж це не бачимо. Ми ж це не бачимо. Але на Авдіївському напрямку за останні тижні 200 одиниць техніки. Десятки, десятки, о, е, е, тисячі, тисячі людей. Вони просто загинули. So, so we don't see details. Sometimes our attitude to the war that Somebody is staying on the, on, on the, on the one place, but it's, it's not just stay. When you stay, you kill the enemy. And this is the fact. Of course, Russia 
understands that now when focus from Ukraine taking off and when this focus to the Middle East and when they try to divide the world in this crisis, Israel uh, Palestinian crisis, and of course, of course, Russia is very happy with this war. They don't count how many children were killed there. They don't think about the flag or nationality. We saw some moments, their attitude. We saw what was in Makhachka line, Dagestan. This is the part of Russia. This is what the biggest wave of anti-Semitism. So what they want, they just want to divide the world to take focus from Ukraine to another war. And if it will not be enough for them, I'm again repeating, and I'm repeating in these two years, if it will be not enough for them, it will not be enough. Because Syria was not enough. They began in Ukraine. After Ukraine in the Middle East, they will continue their plan. And you see that Iran is supporting them, in Ukraine, supporting them with the weapon, and now in the Middle East, again. So, President Zelensky, are you looking at a shift in strategy to try to gain the upper hand right now? Так, ми розробляємо наші військові, розробляють різні плани, різні операції, щоб дійсно просунутись швидше вперед і не очікувано вдарити по Російській Федерації. Але... Голі руч – це неможливо. Без зброї, без відповідної зброї – це неможливо і, і це дійсно факт. Тому треба готуватись, треба чітко розуміти, які кроки можуть бути більш вдалими і, і швидше йти вперед. President Zelensky, NBC News is reporting that U.S. and European officials have begun quietly talking to your government about what possible peace negotiations with Russia might look like to end this war. Have you personally been involved in these talks? And what's the status of these talks? A lot of different voices around us. I heard a lot of different voices and emotions and uh, without any contracting and propositions, a lot of different things. But as for me, I don't have, for today, I don't have any, any relations with Russians. And they know my position. That is the position of my country. That is the position of our people. We don't want to make any dialogue with terrorists. And the President of the United States and Congress, bipartisan support, all these people, they know that I am not ready to speak with the terrorists because their word is nothing. Nothing. We can't trust terrorists because t- terrorists always come back. Always come back. We had already frozen conflict on the east of Ukraine after occupation of Crimea since 2014 and then the occupation the part of our Donbass. We had frozen conflict. We tried to speak with them. Tried to speak with them. And they always been only lies and that no truth. We can't trust them. They just wanted to destroy all of us and kill of us. And then in 2022, we really saw this attack. It wasn't a war. It was a terrorism, just clear, clear terrorism, because they killed not only army, they killed people. They uh, did a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of atrocity. They cut it heads of, of, the, of the children. They did a lot of things. How, how can, can we speak now? And that's why there is no pushing. Uh, open pushing me, maybe that in some circles, maybe some countries, I'm sure, even I'm sure that there are some countries on the level, on the level of intelligence or, or advisors of uh, leaders, maybe they speak with Russia, maybe they, you know, think how to manage everything, but till what that moment that Russia staying on our territory, we, we can't manage it. They have to go out from our territory. Uh, only after that, the world can switch on dipo- diplomacy. 
President Zelensky, you have said here how tired your people are with this war stretching more than 600 days. Is there anything you would be willing to negotiate? Would you be willing to let Russia keep Crimea if it meant holding on to the rest of Ukraine? По-перше, я хочу сказати втомленість є, але ми не говоримо про весь народ України. Повірте мені, втомленість є від будь-яких процесів, які, які а, продовжуються або затягуються. Повірте мені, ніхто настільки не втомлений, щоб уступити терористам Російської Федерації, щоб віддати їм наше життя, нашу свободу, нашу демократію. Вони не дочекаються такої втомленості. Я сказав, так, є втомленість, є у людей, є у когось. Це зрозуміла річ, але в цілому наш народ готовий, готовий відстоювати, як це було в перші дні, відстоювати свої права, права на життя. Тепер, що стосується а в будь-якому форматі говорити про мир. Ми хочемо говорити про мир. Ми хочемо говорити з людьми, які поважають закон, міжнародне право, статут ООН, життя, права людей. Розумієте, не з тиранами, а з реальними людьми, людьми, які готові до контакту, готові до діалогу. Але, вибачте, не під пулями, не зі зброєю у наших голів. Ні, спочатку Російська Федерація повинна вийти з нашої території, а потім ми повинні задіяти дипломатичний майданчик. До речі, наша формула миру – гарний майданчик. Рік тому ми запропонували 10 пунктів формулу миру. На останній зустрічі в Мальті на рівні on the level of advisors in Malta we had almost 66 countries who supported this meeting, who discussed first five points of 10 points peace formula. The next step we will have another meeting on the level advisors and they will finish because they will discuss last five points, and then we will manage to organize the first peace formula summit. It will be, I'm sure, that representatives of all the continents will come and will be on the summit. And after that, when we will have all this peace formula, all the points with details, how to finish the war, when this document will be ready, we will address this document to Russian side, of course, of course, but for this, for this, they have to go out from our land. That is the window for diplomacy, is to go out from our sovereignty. President Zelensky, I am going to ask you about your reaction to the Middle East in just a moment, but I do want to talk about U.S. aid. As you know, with this uh, attack against Israel, Americans are now being asked to fund two wars And there's growing skepticism about ongoing support of Ukraine, particularly among Republicans in Congress. What is your message to U.S. lawmakers who don't want to send another dollar to Ukraine? Дуже дякую за запитання. Перш за все, це не допомога Україні. Я вважаю, що це допомога і для Сполучених Штатів, і для Європейського Союзу, як я це і сказав. Я вважаю, що Україна захищає наші спільні Цінності. Я вважаю, ще раз я повторю це, я вважаю, що Путін хоче розділити Європу, послабити Сполучені Штати Америки е, і постійно, постійно знаходити вогнище, вогнище в Європі, щоб не було стабільності на Близькому Сході, це те, що зараз відбувається, і на інших континентах. І тому я вважаю, що Україна сьогодні захищає Європейський Союз, Європейський континент і наші спільні цінності. My message, one more message, just you, you, you have to understand how we fight, how we live. You have to understand it's just to come to Ukraine and see we are the same people, we have the same values. I'm really thankful to President Biden. By the way, he was here and I think, I think he's a strong man and he was in historical moment. He, he's a huge Hero because he was in those moments under, you know, under Russian uh, missile attack, but he was here and he understood more about Ukraine. Yes, he knew Ukraine even before this invasion. Yes, he knew, but he understood the heroic attitude Ukrainians 
for to democracy, to their people, to their houses, to the families. And he understood he began more strongly to help us. And I'm also thankful to Congress. I had opportunity to address to Congress two times and really Congress and the bipartisan support was very important in very important moment. Now, it's a very important moment not to lose the will, not to lose this strong position and not, not to lose your democracy. Please, it's very important. Now you don't send, you don't send your soldiers, God bless. Don't send your daughters and sons to other NATO country. Because if Russia will kill all of us, they will attack NATO countries and you will send your, your sons and daughters. And it will be, I'm sorry, but the price will be higher. That is my signal. And believe in democracy, believe in Ukraine. So that's it. President Zelensky, talk to the American people. As you know, they are dealing with high prices here at home. Should Americans be expected to fund the war in Ukraine indefinitely? No, nam ne potrebno bez kinca financovati tu vinu. Like I said, we had a gap, 40 billions, 40 billions in our budget. We had this big gap, and Americans should know that it's true that Europe gave us 18, 18 billion came from, from EU, from this gap, 40 billion. And United States also ha helped us, but not only United States. I appreciate and we count on your support. But you should know the people of United States have to respect also the people of Europe. They helped a lot with money and with military. And you should know that with some ammunition, like air defense, I'm sorry that I am repeating this message, but it's real words. It's not messages. It goes from, from me, from the battlefield, from just soldiers and commanders who are not in the cabinet. They are on the front line. But believe me, now each day, our population is bigger. People come back. With additional air defense system, we will have some more million people. That's a lot. They will work. Children will go to school and they will pay taxes. That is the first. When they will pay taxes? Now, how I said, our GDP is increasing 5% this year. Next year, it will be more. And it's not only this. The second point, United States, G7 countries, and European countries now began to work, we send them a message, to work with Russian assets. If you, we count on it, if we will have just interests from the frozen assets of Russia, just interests, and I think it's very important and it's just, if we will have just interests from these 300 billion dollars of Russian assets, this, this, we will have, we will manage how to close the half of the gap of the budget. Why, why to take money from Americans? Take the assets of Russia. We are okay with this. The second one, if there is a the question through society of United States about military and about something else, okay, let's co-produce it. It will be win-win. The third one, if you can't give us, can't give us some financial support, okay, okay, please give us a credit and we will give you back money after the war. And the fourth, we can buy some ammunition. We will buy. If we will defend our jobs. We will have taxes and we will buy. We will buy from American companies. Just allow us. And that's it. Pre President Zelensky. What is your deadline for Congress to act? And what happens if they miss that deadline? That is the decision of Congress. I will not push them, really. I think that they know details. They know me. I saw a lot of congressmen, senators who came to Ukraine, governors who came to Ukraine. We speak a lot. They know that we are very, 
were open, we are very clean. I proposed a lot of represent, I proposed to White House and thanks to them, they sent some people to us for any control how, how our, uh, soldiers, um, spend money. It's, it's not the question for us. For us, that is real life. So we, you know, we wanted to get your support, like we say, yesterday. That's why it doesn't matter. It will be today or tomorrow. We just, I think, lose a time, lose the time. Time is very expensive. That's why we need your support. But you will get more. You will get more. I'm sure. After our win, you will see all of, all these things. Can you help skeptical lawmakers and Americans who don't want to send more money to Ukraine? How long should they expect to send more money? When do you anticipate you can end this war, President Zelensky? I think that the next year with the challenges, because this is the year of your elections, uh, now again we see the uh, critical situation in the Middle East. So I think uh, the, your help is very important for the next year. And that is crucial. And I think if we will manage all that thing that I said, the gap will be minimized in our budget. And after that, after next year, if, if, the war will not finish next year if, if it will not finish. I think that using air defense system, using this platform of cooperation, co-production, and using these uh, new jobs, I think we will manage to minimize this gap and you will not uh, help us such high price. I'm sure. That's it. And... To be very specific, I'm going to ask you about the election momentarily. You are asking for more air defenses. F-16s obviously are in the process of being ready. What more air defenses do you need, President Zelensky? Can you be specific? Yes, anti-drones systems and uh, uh, specific drones, which our uh, defense ministers and commanders, they know very well. That's uh, drones uh, which can attack enemy and also drones which are intelligent, intelligence, and they provide intelligence. So uh, these all specific things we begin to produce. You also have to know that we begin to produce thousands and thousands of them. But this is another, another period of time. Another technology war. Th that's it. We need, you know, millions of, of, of such, you know, things. That's why from this side, we need your help. But also what your, uh, soldiers, commanders, I mean, what, what they shared with us that there is a lot of, you know, things, specific things which they learned from our intelligence and our soldiers. And they really have this knowledge and they really took this knowledge from us how to fight on the sea with the specific sea drones which we produced and without, with, with everything in real war, in practice. And they took this knowledge. Of course, we gave this knowledge to our partners and they took this knowledge to the United States. And this is very important for safety, for secure, for the future to have it. President Zelensky, former President Trump, who is the GOP front runner, has said that if he is reelected, he could end this war in 24 hours. What is your reaction and message to former President Trump about that? Former President Trump said that about 24 hours that he can manage it and finish the war. For me, uh, what can I say? So he's very welcome, first of all. President Biden was here and he I think he understood some details, which you can understand only being here. So I invite President Trump, if he can come here, I will need 24 minutes, not more, 24 minutes to explain President Trump that he can't manage this war. He can't bring peace because of the Putin. If, but always we have if, if. He is not trying, and if he is not ready to give our territory uh, for this 
terrible man for, 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 for the Putin. If you are not ready to give it, if you are not ready to give our independence, he, 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 he can't, he can't manage it. Yes. You so have, he's very welcome. He's welcome to come to Ukraine. Other presidential candidates have obviously come to Ukraine as well. Have you had any contact with former President Trump since he left office, President Zelensky? No. No. I know. No. That's why he's very welcome. Do to you repeat our tradition, which was when he was the president. Do you think he would have Ukraine's back if he were to be reelected? I really, I don't know. Really, I don't know. I hope that, 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 uh, that it depends not only on, uh, on president institutionally. I think it depends on the, uh, opinion of Americans, of your society. I think that is most important. I think it's important in the United States and EU, the attitude of just ordinary people. There, there, it's their support, it's their money, it's, it's depends on them. And they, after they are sure in Ukraine, they love, I know that they support Ukraine, love us, and, and really they understand our so difficult, difficult war, uh, against Russia. And I think uh, only after that, society is pushing the leaders, and leaders make right decisions. President Zelensky, I know I'm going to have to let you go soon. Just a few more questions, if you can bear with me. There are reports that you plan to visit Israel. Is that true? And what will your goal be? Thank you for the question. At the beginning, the first day, the attack, terrorist attack of Hamas on Israel, I ми засудили і висловили свою державну а, позицію, і я а, сказав, що ми готові а, бути а, в Ізраїлі сьогодні. А, складно мені сказати, тому що я президент в державі, іде війна. І ви знаєте, що на полі бою у нас сьогодні дуже гаряче, і тому мій візит туди залежить від багатьох речей. Ну, скажу вам відверто, перше – це те, що буде у нас тут на полі боя, тому що від цього залежить життя людей, які на полі боя. І друге, це залежить від того, чи можемо ми забрати а, своїх громадян України, які сьогодні заблоковані. І якщо ми можемо їх забрати, і якщо для цього потрібно, щоб я а, був, а, де б це не було, в Ізраїлі, а, в Єгипті, куди відпустять наших а, людей, то тоді я а, полечу. Якщо це можна зробити без мене на рівні дипломатів а, наших, наших команд, обох держав, то вони це зроблять. Do you believe Israel is following international law? Дивіться, знаєте, я вам скажу відверто, ми сьогодні дивимось на цю ситуацію не мов на щось нове. А це абсолютно не нова ситуація. Це вогонь, як я вам і сказав, який вже десятиліття між Ізраїлем і Палестиною. І в цей вогонь іноді кидають сірники. І я впевнений, що за цим, за спонсоруванням Хамасу, стояла Росія і стояв Іран. Ось що я вважаю. Ось хто винен. І коли ми говоримо про правила, про закон, то що да немає, коли нам поступають терористи, немає ніяких законів. Все поза за, за, законом. Все є, всі, всі спасають своє життя і воюють проти ворога всіми силами, які вони є. Перше, щоб закінчити цю війну і сісти за стіл перемовин до дипломатичної, треба закінчити з позиції тиску Росії і Ірану. Треба визнати, що ці дві країни стоять за цими процесами. Я б ще назвав би Північну Корею, тому що нещодавно ви бачили, скільки на території Гази було знайдено корейською, північно-корейською зброєю. І це абсолютний факт. І це складно, абсолютно складно. Головне в тому, що якщо терористи 
наступають, якщо терорист атакують, якщо вони відрізали дітям, відрізали голови, ти маєш повне право на захист людей і на захист своєї держави. Але ми повинні зрозуміти, якщо ми можемо відкрити гуманітарні коридори, забрати полонених, допомогти людям, які не приймають участь, ми повинні всім світом це робити. Ось що повинна і всім світом робити все, щоб зупинити в цю війну. Let me just let me just ask you about anti-Semitism, President Zelensky, because you've been so powerful on this. Do you see this as gaining global strength right now? Так. Це те, чого хотіла Росія і Іран. Я вважаю, саме цього, саме того, що вони знають, як це працює. Світ це бачив. Світ бачив вже у часи Другої світової війни. Антисемітизм набирає силу. Іноді люди навіть не розуміють, що таке антисемітизм. Вони не знають, що це таке. Просто це вогонь, в який, ще раз підкреслюю, кинули сірники. Вони розуміли, як це може розповсюджуватись. Росія це робила завжди робила в Україні, звинувачуючи Україну. Вони бомбили Бабі Яр у нас в Україні. Ми це піднімали і тощо. І тому, я думаю, що світ повинен зробити висновки, звернути увагу на ці держави, які стоять за будь-якою хвилею і будуть стояти за наступною хвилею. Антисемітизм або релігійні якісь наслідки, або одну релігію сталкувати з іншою релігією. Цим людям все одно Росія і Іран на сьогодні, і цим людям все одно вони зацікавлені в дестабілізації світу. Це моя, моє особисте ставлення. Президент Зеленський, дякую so much. Before you go, if you want to share, what keeps you going? Do you ever feel defeated? I have a lot of power. But even feeling strong and have a lot of energy, it doesn't mean that we want to fight all our life because the price is high, like I said, because the war takes the best of us, the best heroes, the best men, women, children. That's it. But we are not ready to give our freedom to this terrorist Putin. That's it. That's why we are fighting. That's it. President Zelensky, thank you so much for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. Thank you.